seen like it's never been seen before. From the inside out. Through the eyes of Eye Predator. It's mid-September in East Africa. The dry season. These 12 adult lions and six cubs live together in a pride. An extended family that stays and hunts together for life. This season is particularly hot and dry and much of the lion's prey is beginning to migrate to greener pastures, which means fewer hunting opportunities. Each lion needs over five kilograms of meat a day, about 8,000 calories, and with fewer chances at a meal, this pride can't afford a botched hunt. But taking down an animal five times their size is not going to be easy. The buffalo present challenges. They're hyper alert to danger. Sleeping only an hour a night, rarely more than a couple minutes at a time. A buffalo's sharp horns can span one meter, and they can easily kill a lion. And buffalo protect their own. Smaller and weaker members stay in the middle of the herd, with mostly males forming a protective ring around the perimeter. So in order to succeed against buffalo or other prey, a lion needs to employ teamwork and strategy. A lioness can catch a buffalo, but they can't bring it down by themselves. On the other side, a lioness could certainly eat a gazelle, but it can't catch a gazelle. It's not fast enough, so he's got this really tough, you need friends, you need friends. If these lions are going to share a meal of buffalo, each of them has to play its position well. Some are faster. They're able to run down the animal quicker. Some have the power, and they're a better animal for grabbing the muzzle of an animal or taking them down. Certain lions will find that they're more apt for doing certain challenges. hunt begins when two flushers charge the herd, forcing it into a panicked run. Then one of the pride's two strikers assesses the situation. She scans the herd, deciding which animal to target. She's looking for weaknesses, singling out the young or sick buffalo, or one that strayed from the herd. In a matter of seconds, she's found the target. A buffalo cow with one broken horn. Any fight serious enough to break something as durable as a horn probably did more serious damage to this buffalo. The average lioness can reach a top speed of 54 kilometers per hour. But the strikers, the fastest and most agile lions in the pride, 
can reach speeds of over 60 kilometers per hour. One striker races past one of the flushers and launches into an attack. She does this with incredibly engineered claws. Each paw has four sharp forward-facing claws and a backward-facing dew claw, each sitting in its own ball and socket joint, independently suspended. So as the buffalo tries to buck the lioness, she's able to continually adjust her hold. And that's no easy task. This lioness is being dragged with an unbelievable three Gs of force. It's like the claws on each paw are trying to hold on to a rocket just after launch. Soon, reinforcements arrive. Two more lions jump on the buffalo's back and use their combined weight to try to bring it down. The 770 kilogram buffalo is now carrying three lions, weighing more than 400 kilograms. One lioness digs in with her massive canines, while another covers the buffalo's nose and mouth with her own mouth. Within 15 seconds, the buffalo experiences the onset of oxygen deprivation. He panics. This incites a spike in heart rate and rapid body movement, which rather than conserving what little oxygen he has left, eats it up. The buffalo starts to lose consciousness. His muscles relax. Finally, it's over. But after all that hard work, the star huntress may not even get to eat. That is until the reigning male lets her. He'll eat almost 20 kilograms of buffalo before the females get a bite. The male is predominantly the king, as it were, the head honcho, the big cheese. Prides typically have two or three males, but this pride has only one. He protects the pride. He sires the cubs, and he patrols their territory, ensuring that no other lions encroach. He doesn't participate in the hunt as much as the females do, although he's the first to eat. That's good to be king. It was a particularly good kill. The 450 kilograms of meat will net the pride 700,000 calories, enough to sustain them for nearly a week. The pride eats. This roar from afar is a sound that spells trouble. The kind of trouble that could change this pride forever. An intruder is approaching. But he's not interested in stealing their buffalo carcass. He's come to challenge the resident male and take over the pride. It's been a couple of years since the resident male was himself the challenger. Like most males, his mane started to grow and he reached sexual maturity at the age of two. 
he was then thrown out of the pride he was born into. This serves an evolutionary purpose. Since he's related to all the females in his pride, he must leave in order to mate. But as a teenager, he wasn't strong enough to depose a resident male. So he roamed for more than a year, waiting for his moment to take over a pride. Two years ago, he did. Now, from the sound of the distant roar, the shoe is on the other foot. Personally, I've heard of lions roaring from six miles away. And when you realize how far away, it's like, God, but they seem so close. A lion's roar isn't just heard, it's felt. It begins when muscles between his ribs work like bellows, pushing air at 80 kilometers per hour over massive vocal folds, causing them to vibrate. But what gives the roar its power is the speaker cabinet between the roof of the mouth and the back of the throat. The sound resonates here, increasing in speed and intensity. And in this speaker cabinet, the lion can also manipulate his roar's pitch, the way an opera singer changes a note. The result is a sound that can reach 115 decibels, as loud as a rock concert. Another roar comes, from much closer this time. A series of staccato grunts with clear beginnings and endings, which make the roaring lion easy to locate. The name of the game is intimidation. I don't think they'd rather kill each other. They don't want to get hurt either, because they know if they get wounded, they're pretty much stuffed. Now, both resident and challenger have a choice. Fight or flee. But it's no longer that simple. Suddenly, he sees that he's not just facing one lion, but two. One intruder attacks the male. The second intruder threatens the pride. The resident male injures his paw. And finally, falls on his back in a gesture of submission. His pride and the territory are no longer his. The more dominant of the two challengers becomes the new leader. And as he takes power, things take a brutal turn. kills all the cubs. It seems very cruel, but basically he's just wanting to end the kingdom of this former male, to start his own reign. He's assuring that 
these are his kids, his genes that are being passed on to the next generation. If the new leader can stay with the pride long enough for his cubs to reach adulthood, his genetic line will continue. And though the females may initially resist the new resident male's efforts, at 225 kilograms, he weighs over 30% more than they do. But killing the cubs also serves another purpose. It will actually put the lionesses into heat. The years of stability in this pride are gone in a heartbeat. The new resident male leads them out on the hunt with something to prove. Today, they won't be hunting buffalo, but something far more substantial. This prey is over five meters tall and weighs 1,800 kilograms, with legs taller than a lion's entire body. Its kick can kill in one blow. I've seen a giraffe give a sideways kick. Can you hear the crack from 100 yards away? Caved his head in. If they're going to take down something that big, the males are going to have to join the hunt. There's no rule of thumb that say males don't hunt. Uh, they do. I've seen them actually going after giraffe. And that's a big animal. You need a lot of friends for that one. You need the weight to bring this beast down. A giraffe isn't just big and strong. It's fast and agile too. So the pride will need a unique strategy to succeed. They'll have to set a trap. Three lionesses have herded this giraffe into a grove of acacia trees, where the rest of the pride is waiting. The giraffe is surrounded on three sides by the trees. And the lions are sealing off the fourth side. With nowhere to go, the giraffe begins to panic. And the lions just wait for the perfect moment to strike. Even with an entire pride on him, this giraffe has no intention of going down easy. And it takes nearly an hour to kill it. While the pride feasts on giraffe, less than two kilometers away, the ousted male wanders alone on the savanna, getting hungrier. His paw is injured. And worse yet, everywhere he goes is another pride's territory. There could be a three or four pride setting up territory within you know, this 10 to 20 mile radius. And the only chance that he has at that point is just to try to stay undercover, make as little noise as possible, and just keep running until you get out of that pride's territory. He's used to being stealthy to stalk his prey, but now he must keep a low profile to avoid being preyed upon. Four days ago, he took in almost 30,000 calories, but expending more than 10,000 calories a day, he's got little left in the reserve. 
in the blink of an eye, everything about his life has changed. Getting hungrier, he's reduced to prowling like a hyena. Meanwhile, his former pride takes its time with such a huge meal. The more than a million calories could sustain them for 10 days. If only they could eat the entire giraffe in one meal. The lions will eat 40 pounds of meat and just gorge themselves. They'll go wander off and get a drink of water from the nearest watering hole and then crash out for the next 18 hours. When they wake up, hyenas have taken the carcass and had a feast of their own. The giraffe could have lasted them more than a week. Instead, they'll be hunting the next evening. When the sun is down, it's cooler on the savanna. But it's not comfort driving lions to hunt at night. It's strategy. A hundred yards away at nighttime, we probably wouldn't even be able to see that there's an animal there. But a lion could probably even see the animal breathing. Buffalo have very limited night vision, so they're particularly wary. One buffalo, however, wanders away from the herd. When the moon ducks behind a cloud and visibility diminishes even more, the lions, led by their striker, spring into action. Her eyeball, pupil, and lens are proportionately larger than other carnivores and she can open her pupils three times larger than a human can. But the key to her night vision is the unique reflective coating at the back of her eye, which ensures that every possible photon of light makes it to the cells in the retina. It's so effective that in the absence of the moon and stars, even without any clouds reflecting skylight, a lion's eye can produce an image better than night vision goggles. The less light there is, the greater their advantage. Lions are twice as successful hunting at night as they are during the day. And on a moonless night, their success rate nearly quadruples. In total darkness, they're deadly. The unsuspecting bull sees nothing until it's too late. Twenty kilometers away, their former leader still struggles to face the brutal reality of life without the pride. He sustained an injured paw in the fight he lost. And it doesn't seem to be healing quickly enough. Until it does, he can't hunt fast-moving prey. So he's been without food for seven days. His body is beginning to break down muscle for energy, which means he's getting weaker. Luckily though, his eyes are still good. He spots something in the distance, a sleeping hyena. His hunger spikes as he stealthily approaches to within striking distance. Hyena is pretty distasteful animal to eat, and they only eat it if they have to, but it's lunch, so you can eat it. That'll sustain him for another week. Hyenas can be light sleepers, so this lion must walk in deadly silence. He 
can avoid breaking a twig underfoot by walking on his toes, where soft toe pads help him distribute weight over the balls of his feet. So his foot seems to cup any obstacle, surrounding it with thick furry padding to muffle any sound of contact. For an approach so silent as to not wake even the lightest sleepers, kilograms of lean meat nets him about 60,000 calories. It's not a tasty meal, but he'll sleep with a full belly. A week later, back at his old stomping ground, things have changed. The dry season is in full swing, and the buffalo have moved on to greener pastures. So, out of necessity, his old pride has been looking to other less desirable prey. This 55 kilogram Impala would provide a decent meal for the pride. But the Impala is a formidable opponent. No matter how difficult the challenge, however, these lions have to try. Because if they don't kill at every opportunity, they risk sending themselves down an irreversible path towards starvation. But with the Impala's tremendous acceleration, one of the Pride's flushers simply can't catch it. A second flusher can't either. But just when it looks like the Impala will escape, the Pride's fastest lion, one of its strikers, springs perfectly right at the Impala's neck. All this might seem like a lucky break, but the whole chase was carefully planned. The first lioness's goal isn't to catch the Impala, but to direct its course. When the second lioness lunges, it's to steer the Impala straight towards the third lioness, who times her lunge perfectly. Each lioness nets about 4,200 calories. But the kill comes at a price. The lioness who made it, the pride's fastest striker, injures her leg. And in the wild, even something like a small external wound can be worse than it looks. She's also suffered an internal injury. In captivity, the average lifespan of a lion is up to 30 years. But in the wild, it's only 15 years. Three days later, the pride striker is dead. There's no time to mourn. The fastest young lioness takes her place. But for this pride's former leader, playing alone in a team sport, there's no such backup. He's only got himself. He may survive for a while, eating scraps or picking up whatever he can. It's been two weeks since the old lion was thrown out of the pride he ruled for two years. Since then, 
things have gone from bad to worse. In his heyday, the lionesses in his pride provided him with virtually all the meat he could eat. Without their help, now at a deficit of more than 50,000 calories, he's lost more than six kilograms. His body is feeding on itself. If he's gone a long time without eating, you also gotta think he hasn't had any moisture either. Lions get most of their water from the prey that they catch. So he's extremely dehydrated, and at this point, he's in a weakened state. But the scent of a buffalo dying by a watering hole represents another chance at survival. Maybe his last chance. It's 550 kilograms of flesh. And with no other predators in sight, it's uncontested flesh. A buffalo this size could save his life if he can only manage to kill it. For him, it's truly do or die. A healthy lion could kill this buffalo with some of nature's most impressive teeth. His seven and a half centimeter canines are set 10 centimeters apart. The exact distance between the buffalo's cervical vertebrae, slicing perfectly between the backbones, they can actually puncture the buffalo's spinal cord, paralyzing it. But heat and malnutrition have reduced this starving male's muscle mass. His canines can't get near the spine. They can't even pierce the skin. A healthy lion's canines can cut off the buffalo's flow of oxygen by clamping down around the trachea at an unbelievable 425 kilograms of force. Three times more than a full-grown Rottweiler. But the old lion's bite force is far less than what it once was. Here's your lion. The lion of death, we'll call it. Above here is an animal that can feed itself and hunt. When they get past this line, whether it be disease, thirst, or hunger, he gets too weak. If he cannot chase food and catch it, he's a goner. Every effort he makes to suffocate the buffalo fails. Finally, the old lion gives up. Things are only slightly better for his former pride. In the last week, they've taken only two antelope and a wildebeest calf. Less than 20% of what they require to sustain themselves. Hunting this smaller, faster prey means a greater reliance on the pride's fastest members. It's two strikers. But their new strikers slow to catch on. Since replacing the lioness who'd been killed, she struggled. She's letting the pride's other veteran striker do most of the work. And with only one functioning striker, the pride suffers. When they come upon a herd of small, fast-moving Thompson's gazelle, the rookie striker just watches as the veteran makes a dash for it. The younger, smaller gazelle isn't as fast as an adult. And it's less experienced at eluding predators. The catch is small. 
after the pride's two males eat half, there's less than one kilogram of meat, or barely 1,000 calories for each of the lionesses. They're not just hungry, they're malnourished. If they don't take larger prey soon, they could die. And once lionesses begin to die of starvation, it's not long before the entire pride is lost. With the buffalo herds gone, and with 12 adults to feed, this pride can no longer afford to hunt small game. They have to go for whatever's in their path, no matter how dangerous. At 320 kilograms, a zebra is more than 15 times the size of the gazelle the pride last shared. One zebra could feed them all and feed them well. But zebras are dangerous because they're so powerful. For the lioness who tries to take one, any mistake could spell disaster. A zebra has strong legs and a deadly kick, powerful enough to blind or even kill a lion if it connects. Anytime you go after a zebra, you're really, really putting your life in danger. I mean, severely. And it doesn't take a mortal wound. It takes just a heavy bruise, a broken foot, a smashed jaw, a broken back, and you're going to be high in the lunch within 24 hours. To make matters worse, with top speeds of up to 65 kilometers per hour, a strong zebra can often outrun a lion. And the only lions in this pride who can catch them are the two strikers. They hold while one of the pride's flushers disperses the herd. The veteran striker explodes. but the untested younger striker just watches and hangs passively back. Was this attack unsuccessful? It turns out that one of the biggest problems catching a zebra is seeing a zebra. Lions are colorblind. They have trouble distinguishing between the zebra's monochromatic vertical stripes and the tall green grass of the savanna. And it was just enough to throw the striker off target. Without a precise leap onto the zebra's back, she has no hope of wrestling it to the ground. This spells disaster for the pride. If their number one striker can't take a zebra, it's highly unlikely the rookie can. The pride moves off, but the rookie stays right where she is. She's learned something from the other striker's miss. She positions herself where there's no tall grass between her and the zebra. Then she takes off.
but if she's going to take this zebra down, she'll need a perfect leap and a perfect landing. A lioness is capable of leaping 10 meters, but to do so, all aspects of her anatomy need to work in perfect harmony. First, she'll need to be at the peak of her stride. She'll need extraordinary traction from her rear paws, which plant into ground moving by her at an amazing 17 meters per second. Her fore and back legs extend in perfect unison, triggering a spring-like explosion in her spine. The combination gives her the aerodynamics necessary to fly through the air. She latches onto her prey, tumbling with it until it falls. Each claw independently adjusts to the zebra's movements as it struggles. Finally, she clamps her jaws around the zebra's neck, squeezing at 425 kilograms of force and cutting off the zebra's flow of oxygen. After she subdues her prey, the pride's two males move in to feed. Soon, they all get their share. It took a week for the rookie to step into her role as one of their two strikers, but when the chips were down, she saved the pride. They all gorge on the 320 kilogram zebra until each of its members can hardly move. It's a cruel and lonely end for the exiled king. But it's the same fate suffered by the male he deposed, as well as what awaits the males who deposed him, too. In a few months, the new resident male's cubs are born. Someday, if they're lucky, they'll grow up to lead prides of their own. Just like someday they'll be challenged by younger males for those prides. Such is life on the savannah. In an ongoing story, millions of years old.